Hi friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name is Linda. I'm an energy intuitive reader here on YouTube. I use spirit, my intuition, the tarot to communicate energies to you guys, most amazing, beautiful viewers. Today's reading, we're looking at the person on your mind and we're going to look at how exactly you think that this person is feeling and how this person thinks you're feeling. So this might bring some things to light here in regards to what's going on between you and this person based on how you guys are thinking one another feeling. So you could be pulled to multiple piles. That's absolutely fine. Could be multiple um, energies that are running through the dynamic of your connection, but um, don't force anything to fit. If it doesn't make sense, there's no need to understand anything at all. There's nothing to get. Either it resonates, doesn't resonate. Don't force the messages to fit, okay? so. Four options. Option one is this um, Sass a Burrito Tarot. Put the timestamp in the description box and in the pinned comment below. Option number two is the Lucid Minds Tarot. Option number three is the Spirit Speak Tarot deck. And for option number four, we have the Guardian of the Night Tarot. So sit with these four options and whichever one you're pulled to will most likely be your pile. You can crisscross energies. If I say it's you and it sounds more like your person, vice versa, then do that. But other than that, the um, messaging shouldn't be forced. Okay, I'll see you at your pick. Hello, beautiful pile number one. You guys picked the Sassa Burrito Tarot for your pick. And we'll be using the Sassa uh, Burrito Tarot for how you think your person is feeling. And we'll be using the Murder of Crows Tarot to take a look at how your person thinks you're feeling. Okay, so it's coming from each other's sort of perspectives, which means there's nothing objective about this truth. Okay, it's just to help provide... Um, an understanding as to what's going on in the dynamic because if you know what you're thinking and what they're actually thinking you're thinking this might help to put things into context okay now i am being called to make mention that anytime there's there's confusion we're supposed to be looking within not to not trying to figure out the other person okay so that message was for somebody now you could be on either side here. You could resonate with the Sassa Burrito Tarot or with the Murder of Crows. But one side's going to have what you think your person is feeling and thinking. Okay, and so if you resonate with one of these sides, then this is your pile and your person's on the opposite side. So let's take a look and we'll ask Spirit for a clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of Pile 1. How does Pile 1 think their person is feeling and thinking about them in this connection right here right now spirit clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of beautiful pile one please protect me and the viewer as i channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile one and this connection between them and the person on their mind please help me to channel this message clearly and concisely for pile one thank you so much pile one for allowing me to tap into your energy the energy around you at this time i'm so blessed i do realize you guys have a lot of readers you guys can go to and so i'm so grateful that you're here so we have the queen of wands we have the star and we have the fool how does pile one think their person is feeling and thinking about them and this connection. And we have the moon and we have the five of wands. And we have the empress, which I need to cover. And we have the nine swords. And I don't read bottom of the deck reverse. And under that we have four pentacles. Okay. 
it's an energy that always comes through here but i am gonna pull some oracles just to give us some context how one how do they think their person is feeling we have purpose i know what i am here to do and oh look at that the lion i will use the lion I don't feel those were right the way they fell out, although I do feel there's going to be more than one coming through with this. How does Pile 1 think that their person is feeling? We have success and we have frustration. Okay, I also do feel there's one more. These, and we have the beaver. Okay, and one of these, and then we will begin. Does pile one think that their person is feeling about them right here right now spirit power okay let's put that like that so give me a little bit to tap into this energy Okay, so like I said, crisscross the energy. This could be what your person thinks you're feeling, but I'm going to read this as what you think your person's feeling. It's it's not that negative. You think more your person um, is just sort of confused is kind of what you think. Like You, you feel like your person um, is attracted to you. You feel your person sees you as somebody here who is... Um, someone that they'd like to to be with like you're the complete package here as far as you're concerned with this person but that this person is conflicted only solely about how to come up with um a long sort of game plan here and and, and taking a, a chance on this connection like actually allowing their love for the connection to guide them and so there's something in their world that is keeping them held back from this connection and from you or for, for taking this, this leap towards what they want. Like you feel they want you and you feel they, they see a desire of a future that they could attain in some world with you, but there's conflict right now in their world. And so I, I feel you feel they're sad because they don't know how to come out of this conflict that they might not understand everything just yet in regards to how to get there like uh, to get there like their wish to get to come together with you and so you feel like this person is um has a lot of anxiety around this because they're unable to be with you and you're really the person they want to be with for some of you guys, you could be the other woman, okay? Like this person has another commitment or something. And so with the, the competition here in the Queen of Wands, which represents the other woman, and the fact we see the lovers, which is about sometimes having a choice between two people and not being able to choose maybe the person we want because we're sort of stuck. And so this is causing frustration. And so you feel like this person needs to get empowered, needs to lean into their courage, they need to go beyond what they're experiencing here and lean into their actual purpose in life because you feel like there's something destined about this connection and that this person has a purpose with you and a purpose in this connection and that this is their their wish to do this and that you guys could um, have a lot of joy together, have success together, be happy together, this sort of thing that you guys would have to build this future of course but that your person's already sort of established and that's the block in this connection is the established thing that they have built for themselves and so they're comfortable where they're at they already have a, a home or a, a thing that's already built their world 
but but you feel like they are um really torn over this with the nine swords and this frustration and that they're gonna repeat sort of these thoughts that um they're choosing the thing that feels more comfortable and safe that eventually they'll have to lean into their courage and their power to take action in their life to walk the greater purpose here you know actually lean into their authenticity here and take a chance and because that's the, your love for this person and the love that's going on between you guys is um what's going to drive this agenda you know that's kind of how you you think they feel so simple let's see how they think you feel so we'll be using the murder of crow's tarot and we'll ask spirit for a clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of Pile number one. What's pile number one's person think? That pile one is feeling about the connection and about them. How does pile one's person think? Pile one is feeling about them and this connection right here, right now. Spirit, please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile one. We have two cups in reverse. We have the page of cups. I have three swords. Why is this two cups in reverse here, Spirit? Why is the two cups in reverse here? I'm being called to split the deck. Why is the two cups here in reverse spirit? We have the page of pentacles in reverse. We have six cups in reverse. And we have the death. And we have the ten cups in reverse. And we have the five cups. And we have the queen of swords in reverse. I'll pull some oracles. I don't know if I was mentioning the signs, um, I probably didn't, although we saw Queen of Wands in your spread, which was Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We saw the star, which was Aquarius. Else we see the moon, Cancer, Pisces. Um, not sure what else we saw, but in the spread we see Scorpio. And we see Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So, spirit for pile one. How does pile one's person think that pile one is feeling right here, right now? What do they think pile one is feeling about them and this connection right here, right now? Two more oracle packs. Does pile one think that pile, how does pile one's person think pile one is thinking and feeling right here right now? I just heard they they feel your suffering, reflection, and decision. I use my intuition in all aspects of my life bat and golden egg and release and self-care okay dokie so let me sit here with this energy oh geez that hurt okay Five pentacles in reverse, but um, five cups here. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, it, it does feel like star-crossed lovers here, you know. Uh, this person thinks that you're working on moving on from this connection because you feel as though this person can't come to the decision to choose this connection that they sat in a in a in a indecisive state because they um weren't able to commit to making the decision to move forward and so they might have sat there contemplating you know contemplating trying to understand the best thing for them and so staying in that state of indecision and reflection and not making a move and feeling stuck in that space was a place you didn't want to be. And so your only choice was to focus on yourself and release this person. And this person feels like, um, you know, you, you're sort of coming to terms with the fact that this connection can't come together, that there's no real opportunity here for you and that you'll always sort of love this person and that it's very painful, you know, very painful to leave, that you, you're heartbroken over this and that you really felt like there was a, a soul connection that ran very deep, you know, that that's something you, you'll have a very difficult time getting over the feelings and that you'll always sort of know where this person sits in your heart although greater than that you have to come to terms with letting them go and so they feel like you're really focused on transforming your own life trying to work with the pain of an experience of this connection to heal yourself to make changes in your world that you recognize that there could have been a long-term happy future that just couldn't exist because of this person's lack of taking action. And so they feel like part of you feels, um, they feel like part of you feels like, uh, they didn't do you good, you know? Like, like the, the fact that they couldn't stand in your honor or show up, that you kind of see a little part of them as, as something that was not good for you then, you know? Because if they couldn't choose you or they couldn't decide, then they're obviously not good for you in some way or that they have some sort of shadow side here. And so a little bit of you regrets or I was looking back like, uh, maybe I, I shouldn't have engaged with this person or, you know, did what I did here with this person. They feel your telepathic energy. They feel you communicate with them. They feel that you're, um, you might not be really seeing, you know, where, where it is that, um, that this was supposed to, like, where this was supposed to lead to because you didn't end up coming together with this person so it's like I don't really understand why this has happened or where I'm supposed to go with this because all you can really know up until this point is a disappointment and the, the past of what's happened and left you sort of high and dry and you don't want to feel rejected and you don't want to feel sad and you don't want to feel heartbroken and you don't want to feel separated and you don't want to sit there so your only choice is to move forward you know, but, but they feel like a part of them will forever sort of be in your heart, you know, that you, you have this innocent love here for them and it will remain that way. They also feel like you probably emotionally are still hung up on them, you know, that you're still having a difficult time releasing because you're still looking back on this situation the things that didn't happen the fact that it was over the fact they couldn't show up the fact that you knew there was a, a 10 cups and an opportunity here to do this and this the person didn't show up i also feel like this this experience of losing out or whatever this experience was is completely sort of um shifted your world 
Like maybe you've had to make major changes because of this connection or this person, like in your personal world here, and that your life won't be the same after experiencing all this stuff. And so I'm getting a part of them also feeling kind of guilt here for maybe you having to take on a whole bunch of change, take on having to, in parentheses, because we never have to do anything, but that the bulk of all of the, the heavy lifting of the change and the transition and all of this has called, kind of fallen on you. And all you sort of got out of this was a broken heart because you guys are separated and, and an unclear answer from them and no certainty from them. And no, in some cases, some of you guys never got any closure at all. Really, just the fact that this person was like, you know, that an indecision is a decision that they couldn't come together with you. They feel like you're still coming into a full potential of your own self. And so by you sort of really shifting from them and this connection and taking time to work on self and care for self is uh, what you're sort of wanting to do. Although it's difficult because, I don't know, maybe they feel you're still hung up on them. So maybe it's still fresh in some way or maybe it just runs so deep that they feel like you're still emotionally invested here like your heart will always be here is kind of how they feel that you feel and, and they also feel like um your love ran as deep as theirs like they feel like your feelings reflect them uh, that you feel like both of you guys kind of felt the same you know, like there was no question that both of you guys understood and understood maybe telepathically because that keeps coming through with this bat. I'm getting heavy Gemini Libra Aquarius energy again. And so that was the pain is like, I know you feel how I feel. But yet I'm able to stand up and make the change and come forward and make myself available and do what I need to do, but yet you can't choose me or stand up or make the decision here to do what you need to do to stand up. This is how they think you feel about them, that they didn't do this. And so this has changed the dynamic. Like There's no way but to, to shift and change this whole dynamic because of what has happened. You know, like you can't just forget this episode because this person didn't choose. And so this is part of that, like I said, this little toxic part that they feel like because they let you down or because they didn't want to stand up or something was unhealthy about how they couldn't stand up or, or what they couldn't give to you. And so you see that part of this person as uh, something you don't like or something that wasn't good. And that if you could sort of... Um, change what's happened here in a way that you would like like there is some like they feel you have regret in engaging with them because of how it ended you know the fact that it didn't lead to something is what i should say it didn't give you what it was that it was that you felt it should have gave you like them this person this connection it didn't reflect back to you all those things and so you're looking back in sadness and all it left you feeling was sort of bad, sad, left out, rejected, unclear. And, and for a small group of you guys, you might have shown anger or you were mad or cold. But if you did show this, this person knows that you're not inside feeling cold, bitchy, angry, right? Because this is my bitch card here so I don't know if you said some mean things because some of you guys did with this okay I called them names you're, you're so upset you said some things you couldn't take back if that's the case uh, spirits coming through here with a message for you specifically that they know that the fact that they hurt you in that way was why you were saying what you said but that you 
deep down you didn't mean those things and and maybe you did but this is their perspective that you didn't really mean it that you don't really think these things of them you know but but a little part of them does feel like there was a toxic thing in them that wasn't able to do you know what they were here sort of to do because this is like we have a spiritual con contract you know your soul knows my soul and look at this reflection we're cut from the same cloth we have the same understanding and so I show up and where are you, you know, and you got to kind of reflect and show up and here. I'm seeing like a cup here in the background and here I don't see a cup. So it's like you came ready with a cup and they came without a cup. And so here you are with your cup and here they are as this cross and bones. And so you're like, screw it. Like I can't just have one cup here. It takes two cups. So I have to release. Mm-hmm. That's what I have. Pile number one, I'm sorry if you do resonate with this. It seems very painful here, you know, but I don't see here, um, you know, any future states. So could you just be where it's at right now? And um, I do feel that what, why ever this person couldn't pull out of whatever they were doing is solely because of them. And so... When we, when we start to um, think about the action and what happened, we could get more hurt. So just know that um, why this person couldn't do whatever they didn't do is, has nothing to do with you at all. Like at all, at all, at all. It is their soul, oops, their soul contract lesson. This is what's going to allow them to shift and change their world. They have to step into their courage and their strength and face their fears and their karmic journeys. This is part of their soul growth to overcome and to figure out, you know, however long it does take, which has nothing really to do with you, although you are a player here in this thing. And so it's hard not to take it personal, but unless we think we're the actors in the play, like I say, you know, and, and if we feel that much, you know, then we're still attached to an identity. And so we need to sort of um, allow ourselves to connect to the, the authenticity of our being, which is no one's going to make us happy. You know, we are completely fulfilled already and if we haven't got there yet then this might be a part of why we're still stuck so if i'm reading for a twin flame or a deep soul connection here that is very challenging and stuck i feel like it might be a twin flame with the with the lovers we're seeing two cups the six cups and this this mirrored reflection then what spirit is saying is because you have more work to do and it's not that this person has to do this that or the other yes they got to do what they got to do but it, it isn't that they got to do that for things to shift it's you got to do what you got to do which is detach from the identity that there's something here this person was able to give to you and couldn't because what that's mirroring to you and showing you is a karmic lesson about you fulfilling your own cup, you finding this within yourself, you asking yourself the question, why am I so heartbroken here? And it goes deeper than all oh, just because this person left. It's because I, I, I thought I could get something. I thought I could do something here that it didn't happen. But why, why did we put so much weight in thinking this thing could do anything at all for us? And because of some belief we carry that we're not enough or that love is external or that someone could fulfill us, right? That's a big, tall order. Someone else could give me something. You know, only you can give yourself that something. So if we're still not feeling it, we might understand it. You know, we might understand it on an intellectual level where we hear like, yeah, we're whole and complete. We don't need anyone else. But unless we inner believe this, you know, we really go deep and ask ourselves the question, you know, because if we're hanging on to another belief, we'll never attain a new belief. So we have to drop our beliefs 
let's see, I'm incomplete without this person. I'm hurt without this person. This, you know, this person's doing this, that, and the other. That's all back to self-reflection in order for things to shift for us to say, I didn't need what I thought I needed here. And now the energy shifts. And if we're still doing, you know, the old thing here, the chances are you're exactly where your person's at because your person is also needing to face a challenge that they couldn't quite come to and neither could you. So if you feel like you stepped up and where was this person? It's like, did you really step up? Because your lesson is to overcome that, you know, that, that I'm not good enough on my own or I need this person to be my other half or fulfill me in some way or I feel any sort of lack because of what's happened. And yes, we're human, so we have feelings, but the feeling that keeps us stuck, that keeps us in our mind, that keeps us really feeling completely shattered, devastated, it's, it's ourselves and the universe coming back saying there's something untrue that you're believing right now, that you're, you're, you need someone else or that it's not enough. So take a look at that because when you transform, you know, inside and you deal with your heartbreak in a way that removes the illusions, then this person also mirrors you and they're more matrixy. So they got to deal with physical things in their world, detaching, you know, but in the same way it's mirroring because there's some sort of karmic thing that they have to overcome and, and use their courage to face, just like you have to sit there and question yourself. So, sorry, that went deep. That pulled through. That's all I have for you. Pile number one. I hope this helped, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye -bye. Hello, hello, beautiful, beautiful angels. Pile number two. I love you guys so, so much. You guys pick the Lucid Minds Tarot for your pick. We'll be using the Lucid Minds Tarot to take a look at how you think your person is thinking and feeling okay versus how they think you are thinking and feeling with the santa morte we'll use for them now you can crisscross which side you're at or on you you should resonate with one side being how you think they feel okay if neither side is what you think they feel then it's not your eating if it doesn't make sense not your eating there's nothing to get there's nothing to understand it either resonates or it doesn't okay lots of viewers here so don't take specific messages that aren't for you it's guidance for someone else but the overall energy should resonate with your situation we'll ask spirit for a clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of beautiful pile number two right here right now i pile two thinking that their person is thinking and feeling about them and this connection right here right now spirit please protect me and the viewer as i channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile two thank you so much pile two for allowing me to tap into your energy and the energy around you at this time i'm so blessed to be here we have the two of wands We have the Ten of Swords in reverse. How does Pile to think that the person on their mind is feeling and thinking about them? Ten of Wands in reverse. Okay. We got the Page of Cups in reverse. Seven Pentacles. And finally, we'll pull some Oracles as well. How does Pile 2 think their person is thinking and feeling? And we have four wands. And bottom of the deck, we have the death card. And I don't read bottom of the deck in reverse. And under that, we have the magician. Okay. I'll pull some oracles. Now, keep in mind that how we think and what your person thinks is just uh, someone's per perception. Okay? It doesn't mean it's the objective truth. So... If this happens to be a reverse pile or whatever, it's not an objective sort of way that you're actually feeling. It's just how they think. So how does pile two's person, or how does pile two think their person is feeling right here, right now in this connection? So the whole point of this is so that you guys understand what each other's thinking so we can rectify 
because sometimes when we understand someone else's point of view, we can come to a greater understanding rather than being fixated or focused on what we think, you know, because if we're really hung up on our own sort of thoughts, then we start to engage in a way that might be causing the conflict that you're trying to avoid. Okay, so let's see. We have denial. I acknowledge my fear, but I replace it with the insight of awareness. Regret. I know that I cannot change the past. Childhood. Flow. And owl. Air energy. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And we have Scorpio. And we have Virgo, Gemini. And what's under that? We have the King of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn energy. Okay, just let me sit with this energy for a little bit and see what you think this person is thinking and feeling. More Virgo. And the Emperor in reverse, Aries. Wow. And the Queen of Cups. Sorry, this is telling me a story right here. And the Eight of Wands. And the Fool, Aquarius. Okay. So, you feel like this person had a choice at one point in this connection. And their choice was to admit their feelings or open up to you emotionally. And because they didn't choose this and come forward and, and put this energy into it, that there was an ending, you know? And, and that this um, ending is something that might be shifting this person's energy in some way. Like you feel like this person is really needing to sit with that ending that they are kind of not over you just yet. That this ending is allowing them to tap into where they might be in denial. Because all this regret of not choosing the path of this connection and allowing their feelings to come out and acknowledge them and, and put it into motion or put it towards practical showing. You know, like they had feelings, but they didn't allow their feelings to come through. So they didn't really show up in any way here. And that you were showing up or you were showing them interest to till you just couldn't keep investing in them because of their in denial or just they didn't allow things to happen. And so that this person was more of a um, experiencing the connection, you know, from, from their mind place and that um, this experience that they had with you is what's going to allow them to shift themselves in some way here so that they could come to some bigger understanding in their world, you know, like if they want to manifest love, then they're going to have to deal with certain things, you know, but, but that this person couldn't be empowered, didn't take action, couldn't be someone you relied on, didn't want anything in regards to building a long-term stable thing here and that they're having to reflect deep within themselves to really understand why they couldn't and why this didn't happen. That there's something sort of deficient, I guess, about this person that might have been um, stemmed from childhood that doesn't allow them to express, doesn't allow them to want to be in a committed sort of energy that keeps them from moving forward, maybe in life, or maybe just they, they require a lot of change here. Maybe they're still a little immature as far as you're concerned, you know. And so you're seeing this person as someone here who's um, going to sit with what happened, which is you leaving or you threatening to leave or you just being on off terms with this person until they figure it out you know until they can show it in the real world like okay you have feeling somewhere in outer space you know you have um 
something going on here that's you're not bringing to this world is kind of how you feel like you're not showing me telling me engaged with me it's not there's nothing here as far as you're concerned between you and this person because they haven't acknowledged they haven't acknowledged their feelings they haven't acknowledged to you what's going on and so this 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 understanding of what's going on is is known but they can't just come out and take action or say anything about it and ju and um, confirm what you already sort of know to be true and what you know that they know to be true. And so they're going to eventually hit a wall and where they can't carry it no more because how long can we shove our feelings down before we got to take action here? You know, that there is a beautiful coming together that you and this person could have. And that they're going to see and, and eventually want for themselves like uh, a happiness, a coming together and, and building of something at some point in their life where they'll just sort of come to that realization and have no choice but to manifest this in their life, you know, but they'll have to really make massive change here and how they've been engaged in their world previous to you, you feel. For some of you guys, you guys might share the same sort of workplace or same community of people. For some of you guys, that's a, a takeaway for some of you guys. So, yeah, that's how you think that they, they, they feel here. So let's take a look at how they think you feel. If you resonated with that being either you or your person. Okay. And, oops, I put the card in the wrong place. Okay, let's take a look at the Santa Morte. <clears throat> and we'll ask the same. How is Pile 2's person thinking? Pile 2 is feeling and thinking right here, right now. Pile 2's person. What do they think? Pile 2 is thinking and feeling in this connection. Right here, right now, spirits, please help me to channel this message for the greatest and highest good of this connection. And pile two. And so we have the two cups and the six sorts in reverse show up one more spirit okay bottom of the deck we have the world and under that we have the fool aquarius energy it's pile two's person thinking that pile two is thinking and feeling romance Rest. Okay, one more. Confidence. Does Pile 2's person think that Pile 2 is thinking and feeling right now? Shark. Interesting. I, I saw a shark card um, right before I pulled it. Okay, and then we have the beat and let's pull one of these yeah some of you guys work with this person i feel okay let's pull one of these my cat's scratching i'm gonna grab my cat or i'm gonna open the door just give me a sec here come on okay okay we have we have judgment i understand that everyone has their own unique path and challenges success i know that there is no greater goal than to love blame i accept responsibility for my well-being okay i think this person is really intimidated by you okay and i think they're intimidated by you 
like just that's their feeling that's coming through but i know we're looking at how they think you feel or how they think yeah you're feeling let's see i'm gonna flip these although there's lots already coming through okay so we have the four pentacles in reverse and we have the eight cups in reverse we have the hangman in reverse pisces and we have the queen of swords in reverse and they're really intimidated by uh gemini libra aquarius energy and then we have strength wow so this person just so you know like they see you as somebody full like in power mode so i don't know maybe you're in a, a position of um power over this person maybe you're their boss or in a leadership role okay but but i feel it's coming through very strong here this person feels like you're um unhindered by anything really and this might be like this person has uh like they're they're comparing you to them in some way here and that you think they're a little bit um pathetic you know is the word that comes through for not being as confident as you you know like like, like that you um Like you're going to be happy one way or another, you know, you're going to, you're going to find love. You, you pretty much get what you want. Like, this is what this person thinks. Like you can get what you want, who you want. And because this person was incapable, as far as you're concerned to show up in a way here that that would be um confident and take charge and like you're equal because they don't feel like they're your equal you are saying like oh this person is um this that and the other and so i could just do this myself like i don't need this person you know like in in your world like you could just create your world without them like you don't need them for anything is kind of how they see it you know like you're that you're going to have and build and and do what you want and and you know maybe now you might be stuck on them or maybe like i don't even see that they think that you like them like maybe they just feel like how could someone like you like me you know and they're just so intimidated by you here i feel and that um maybe there was a period of time where they felt you um or maybe down about something potentially or just uh, having a difficult time um I don't know maybe just a low point or, or whatever it was that uh made you maybe be drawn to them like you 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 experienced some pain or some hurt in some way and this is why you were drawn to them or why you would even consider them or have any consideration for them you know, like you weren't in your right mind and so because you weren't in your right mind sorry i don't know if i told you two of cups is hearing what the six swords in reverse and so six swords in reverse and eight cups in reverse this is like a very difficult time moving forward from a situation that is just not good like emotionally it's not good and it's caused conflict and we're sort of feeling stuck you know feeling stuck and so i feel no this is kind of where i'm not very clear I feel for a majority of you guys, like almost all of you guys, nothing's ever happened with this person ever, ever. Okay. Like, I mean, nothing's ever happened. Obviously, you know them and you guys share an energetic, but there hasn't been a, you know, like a consummation here or like a relationship, you know, and you might've been in a relationship or they know of a relationship that you've struggled with or they're perceiving or projecting this that you had someone or something that was difficult in your world and so you're not in your right mind right now and so maybe you're on the rebound or maybe you're this is how you heal or maybe you're looking at them to build your confidence up you know like like that this person is going to build me up because i'm suffering or i'm trying to get over a, a partnership 
already that's happened in my life. And it's hard for me to move on unless I build myself up and have other people interested in me and, and make myself feel confident and beautiful. And, you know, and so I'm going to be in this power, but, but I'm not really thinking very clearly right now. The thing that's, that's driving my agenda here and really my feelings for pile two is, um, or sorry for pile two person is that I'm hurt for uh, at least stuck. Not necessarily hurt, but there's a relationship I'm unhappy with, or it's not satisfying, or it's been difficult, or emotionally unfulfilling, or it's something I kind of just want to escape from, you know? And so in order for me to escape, I got to kind of go and, and do this. Mm -hmm. And so if you've um, been aloof or cold or judgmental to this person in words or action, this really has impacted this person. Because this, and they see this as um, not a safe place kind of for them to come out, you know? Yeah. And so they're like, I can't um, come out in this connection. In, under this energy, especially if this is a masculine energy, because they feel like they can't, you know, like, like be your equal, like they don't want to, they don't want to feel, I mean, no one wants to feel this way, whether you're masculine or feminine, but, you know, masculine role is one that wants to be more of the um, one that can take care and, and do that sort of role, you know, because masculine energy is one that supports the feminine energy. But if there's nothing to support, or if they feel less than, like you're the one that could support self, like then I'm useless. What am I doing here? You know, masculine wants to be the hero to save the princess. That's that's archetypical masculine energy. Not I want my princess to rescue me in any way. And so this is what was unclear. So some of them might be coming out of a connection, you know, that, that they're still emotionally intermingled in some way not necessarily in, emotionally in love or still wanting to be in that connection but they need to resolve the emotions of how that's left them because they're still in that messy soup messy soup of emotions you know they never really got over this that person and so they need to have closure there they need to really be done with the emotional part of that other situation so that they can be in their confidence because they're low, you know, and it could be a multitude of these things. They're projecting that on you, you know, that you're this confident bright light because they're very low on what they're experiencing in their world. And, and for some of them, it, like I said, it's a connection, you know, and, and if it's a connection that's ended, that's even more why they feel low. So they, they can't just be their chipper, cheery self here. And so since you've seen them in this light, it's like you're already judging them in a way here or how they feel. And even if you haven't said anything or know that you haven't done this, then for sure it could be a projection. It's like pile two thinks I'm weak because I can't do what they're wanting. So I think there is a thing here about both of you guys healing, you know, and so... I don't know, maybe both of you guys were in the connection, a uh, connection. I don't feel it was together, you know, or, or, or something in your life. If it wasn't a connection, like something that emotionally you have to heal from and that they have to heal from. And so both of you guys need to be clear and be on sort of equal grounds. And, and, and you can't be fully empowered and then uh, unempowered. And, you know, it's all a belief system here because when we feel like we're not good enough or that we're less than or that the other person is sort of in charge or that's all stemming from that inside of us. And I feel this person wants to be successful, you know, so it doesn't really talk about their, 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 their whether they like you or hate you. It's like their feelings right here and what they're thinking is overdriven by this, by how intimidated they are of you. And that if this person was to step forward or do something here, that you would um, be all over it and it wouldn't give them space. You know, 
maybe you were grilling them. Like, I need to know, I need to know, or what is it? What is it? Like, I'm unclear, like that sort of thing. And so it's like, oh, if pile two is like totally just ready to, to, to get that, like, I don't know. So make this person feel comfortable at all. So they kind of want it to be more of an organic thing, not forced and It's soft, so, so I feel like this person could definitely be healing from something here, you know? Uh, definitely healing from self-confidence issues and definitely um, feeling less than. And uh, this is all about how they engage with themselves, you know, how they see themselves. So if we start to see that we're less than or we're not good enough or that other people have more power, then that's what we perceive. And that is a stuck in, in a perception that's untrue. We need to connect to the divine, see things differently. You know, we have to recognize our ego. And the ego gets in the way. They're saying, oh, not good enough. Or, oh, this person's better. And that, and this, and the other. And so in order for this person to be available here to make things work, they have to let go of that thought system and how they're engaged in their um, perception in this connection is what needs to go. You know, not necessarily um, anything else other than just how they're seeing themselves and engaged in this connection. That's what needs to shift and change. That's what they need to let go of for their confidence to come in. And so you might just need to give this person sort of some space or make them feel safe. But I mean, it doesn't really matter what you do. Someone's either going to get to that or not. You know, there's nothing you could really do. But I feel like there's healing. In it. And I feel like this is going to provide healing to you because I feel like this might have hurt you. You know, because because one thing I'm picking through and, and you could talk to a lot of people who, you know, are, are, are beautiful and successful and in leadership roles and confident. It's like, oh, you could get anyone. And any of this is like you're the most lonely people because people don't even approach you and they're too intimidated. And it's like, well, so you're healing this, you know, for some of you guys. Eight swords. Yeah, it's it's that's that hangman in reverse. You know, this is where we only see how we see it. We can't see it any other way. And it causes challenges, limitations. We're stuck in a, in a mental prison of our own limitation. We're not good enough. This is what will happen. It's like, well, if you think this, then you're confined. You're hemming yourself into a belief. You're confined and constricted and therefore you cannot move. So this person is blind about the truth can't move forward because of an untruth and limiting themselves because of a thought and the thought is i'm not good enough and so they need to put an end oops put an end to this um sort of thing here so they definitely need closure as well i, I feel in in some situation that had them feeling like they couldn't move on from it and like i said it was either you or them but i feel like um there's a recognition here that someone might be on the rebound or needs a little bit more work in that area so if they're not being open with feelings like how you were saying maybe it's because of this you know but but i feel like if if they already know that you were in something it's like well i kind of don't want to be a rebound here for pile one or pile two you know one or the other mm -hmm. okay so this is what i have pile number two i love you very much i'll see you at the next one bye, -bye. Hello, hello, gorgeous angels, pile number three. I love you guys so, so much. We're looking at you, the person on your mind, and how do you think this person feels about you and how this person thinks you feel about them? So this is coming from both of your perspectives. So obviously there's nothing really objectively true about it. It's just how you're perceiving it and how they perceive it, okay? So I'm using the Spirit Speak tarot deck for your, like how you think they feel. And I'll use the rider weight for how they think you feel and think, okay? But you could be on either side. It's up to you to determine. So if you don't resonate with any of sides, any of the sides, then this isn't your, your pile. You might want to go check out another one, okay? Don't force anything to fit. If it doesn't make sense, there's no need to say, that's confusing. I don't understand it. I don't get it. There's nothing to get, okay? You don't get it. Not your pile. So... It should be the energetic essence of this reading that resonates, not necessarily the specific messaging, because sometimes specific messages come through for certain people that need to hear it. Only take what resonates, leave the rest behind. There's lots of viewers here, so not all of it is going to be your story, but it should 
uh, match the essence of what's going on here between you and your person, okay? So if you resonate with one side being you, then chances are your person's on the other. We'll pull some oracles. I dropped a card. Give me a second. There. We'll pull some oracles as well. We'll ask Spirit for a clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of Pile 3. How does Pile 3 think their person is thinking and feeling about them? And this connection right here, right now, Spirit. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile number three. Thank you so much, pile three, for allowing me to tap into your energy, the energy around you at this time. I'm so blessed, so grateful to be here doing your reading. And I do realize you guys have a lot of tarot readers. You guys can go see. And so I am very uh, honored and blessed that you're here. I love doing your reading. Feel another one wow for pile three how do they think their person is thinking and feeling right here right now spirit please help me to channel this message it's a lot cards are feeling weird coming out sort of like in little bursts so uh, I don't know what this means. Let me let me see. I'll take that into context when I read your your cards. But a little scattered and um, and little bursts here. It's like held back, held back, and then burst. So I don't know what this means. Let's see. Okay. So uh, all what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on my air conditioning. <laughs> okay. I'll be like two seconds. I guess I'll be no seconds because you're not you're not um, on the other side. Okay. Let's see. What do we have? We have the Page of Swords. Okay. We have the Ten Cups in reverse. Okay. And we have the Two Swords. And we have the Empress, Taurus, Energy, and uh, Libra. We have Eight Pentacles. And we have oopsie oh yeah nine pentacles in reverse okay and then we have the two cups and we have the seven cups that's under the page of swords we have the hermit virgo energy i'll leave it like that okay so let's look at the oracles we have regret i know that i cannot change the past we have loneliness i know that i am never alone and we have fear i realize that i am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love and we have it gets better with the stitching or band-aids on the broken heart here. Six hands up in the air. We have death, Scorpio energy. We have deer, earth, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, and cosmic egg, and the raccoon. More earth, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn energy, heavy Virgo. So... This one's coming through quite loud, but let me just sit with this energy for a second here, okay? That's under the Hermit. Six cups. For six cups, we have two pentacles. And four swords. Okay. How you think they feel? Like, like, uh, like there was a potential, like a, a huge potential here of being happy. They could have been happy, but they sat indecisive and they didn't decide and they couldn't choose you and they were unclear. And so there was so much love here and you gave them so much love and you put in so much energy, effort, dedication, time, effort, and everything that you could. You know, but no matter what, this person was unbudgeable or unclear. Unable to choose you, keeping the back door open or just uncertain. And so they might have had a, a big dream about this connection in some way, you know, coming together, being together, you know, or that they, they recognize you had this and that you guys could have this beautiful relationship. But the only way to have the beautiful relationship that you think that they were aware of and that you were aware of to come together in a balanced way would be for them to get clear for them to commit for them to not be so confused for them to be decisive in this and this would take them having to go within to see what they want 
They'd have to really question themselves, like, what do I want? And understand what they want and know themselves better, you know? And, and maybe heal some things and not to be so up in the air. And, and so they were having a difficult time prioritizing, a difficult time choosing. They were having a difficult time choosing you and prioritizing this connection. And so you feel like this person did share something special here with you with the Six Cups. Like, this is soulmate energy. This is, uh, you know, um, having that innocent recognition at, at a very raw, innocent uh, level that you guys shared, but that this person potentially has some deep childhood uh, sort of traumas here that are needing to get healed that are causing them a difficulty in, in choosing wisely or prioritizing their life or, or be, making themselves available or not knowing themselves. And so they're letting fear drive, their inauthenticity drive. But this person's choosing loneliness in their life because they're too afraid to do anything about it and they don't know themselves. So they're just sort of lonely. And so this might have ended in the end, or this might have resulted in the end of a, this connection. And, and that this person is sitting looking back like, shit, like I, I fucked up, you know? And that they'll eventually want some sort of reconciliation that your connection could get better at some point once they do the inner work, once they understand what's going on better, maybe once they allow themselves to spiritually shift, understand who they are. But that this person was too passive. They were a little too... Um, not taking action here, uh, very hesitant, easily spooked. That they're kind of, um, maybe they're just an independent energy that likes to go it alone, but they, they never made themselves available. You know, like they never showed up, like you're ready to put the energy in and commit here. It was just them sort of, I, I'm this lone energy and I'm like this because I choose to be alone. And But really they're just kind of, they're curious about what it would be like. They, they, they recognize the love here, but it's like, I'll just observe this rather than in, engage and partake because either I'm too fearful, not too deserving, have too much trauma, don't understand myself. And now that I've sat like this too long, supporting my inauthenticity, not making myself available and not prioritizing and choosing you, now you've sort of moved on or you're no longer available or it's causing an, a rift between us. And um, I believe at some point it might get better, but I'm going to have to put in the energy and, and do the work here in order to heal this and recognize myself a little bit better. So yeah, that's how you think they feel. That they're not living true to their real self, which is leaning into what brings them love because they might feel like they're not deserving of it right now. You know, like they're, they're, they're um, more concerned with how they think they need to be. Okay, so if this is how you think that they feel or the other way around then this is your pile and we'll look at the other person your person and see how they think you feel then now this reading is intended to help us to understand how the other person might be thinking so that we can shift you know only we can shift and so if we maintain in our position without seeing the other person's sort of perspective or where they're coming from, whether it's right or wrong, it, it can help us to understand the dynamic. Like, why is it not working? Why is there a challenge? Why is it difficult? Well, if we know how the other person feels, we'll know, you know, and if we really want to be healing and find some common ground, then we have to take into consideration what someone else might be experiencing as a greater truth. Although it might, it's not objective, it's still a great truth because they believe in that, you know? So let's see. How's the other person then thinking that you're feeling? How is pile three's person thinking that pile three is thinking and feeling right here, right now, spirit? Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile three. Thank you so much. Please help me to channel this message. I'm so blessed to be here doing this reading. Thank you so much. 
this one here. This pile is three person think that pile three is thinking and feeling right here right now spirit hmm I'm gonna leave that there Some weird cards like I said falling kind of sporadically here Oops, I'll put that there. Okay, let's pull the oracles as well. <clears throat> Pile three's person. How are they thinking? Pile three is thinking and feeling. Two more oracles. Wow, okay, I'm being told to leave it. That fell very weird. I feel like this person is coming out in, 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 in intervals. Whatever the hell that means. Okay, so eight pentacles. Don't read bottom of the deck reverse. And you had eight pentacles in yours as well. And here we have the five, sorry, not the five, the seven swords in the reverse. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that. We have eight swords in reverse. We have knight of pentacles in reverse. We have justice in reverse, Libra energy. And we have the nine pentacles, which you had in yours in reverse. And we have three swords crossing. Okay, and then we have the three wands. And we have the Magician, Virgo, and Gemini. And I believe you guys had the Magician, didn't you? I don't know. No, I'm not remembering. Okay, and Nine Cups in reverse. And we have Strength, Leo Energy, and Page of Pentacles. Okay. And we have Self Care. And we have the Swan. Look at that. Two Swans. Although it's a reflection, swans for me are always indica indicative of twin flame relationships. Freedom. I possess the power and the free will to create my own happiness. And envy. I am the same as everybody, but with the different challenges. Okay, we have isolation. Interesting, because yours had loneliness. And we have movement. This gives me eight wands energy. We have rest and we have flow. Okay, let me sit here with this energy. How they think you feel. And then six swords in reverse and four pentacles in reverse and the star Aquarius energy. Okay, so they see as somebody who is empowered, who experienced uh, an imbalance here in this connection. It was unjust, you know, it was unjust because of the fact that there were limitations that kept this person and you from like moving on or moving forward together in this connection and making things happen. And so it's like you've broken out of any sort of um, blind spot you might have had, whatever you were telling yourself or believing, you know, and, and you did this so that you could move forward and find some strength. And so you kind of cut your losses here in some way. And that um, you're, you're not going to really care so much about this person so much as now you care about yourself. You know, you care about yourself. You no longer want to um, play in some sort of um, illusion or some deception and that you want to be very honest with everything out on the table and, and your main focus is your own 
self, like making yourself happy and doing what's best for you. Focusing on self. And so you're going to just sort of shift from this connection to focus on what works for you. And so some of you guys might be focused on work, but, but it's taking you time to get here. You know, taking you time to break free from this connection or an understanding that you had. And they see you as someone who's absolutely beautiful. They see you as someone here who's mirrored them. Someone feel very connected to you. Like I said, it could be that they resonate as you being their sort of twin flame or their other half in some way or reflecting them. That you felt very um, alone when you were with them. And this was heartbreaking because it couldn't show up for you. And so what you really wanted was to be free of this connection because you were tortured and in pain and suffering. And so all you wanted was just, you know, to be happy and to, and to move forward. But it took a lot of strength for you to lean into seeing that you deserve to be happy and that you can move forward and that you don't have to stay in, in their world and their illusion that you could just move forward. And so although they see you as someone here who's, who's healing from what's happened, you're at a stage here where you're just moving forward and breaking free from this. This person feels like um, the illusion here or the lie was one that you made to self, that you, you were stuck to this situation or this person even though it was unfair or really imbalanced and this person couldn't really move forward or was really kind of slow and and the big truth that you're embracing here is where you wanted to go for yourself where you wanted to move where there was potential for you and that you were sort of having to come to terms that emotionally this person wasn't it they weren't showing up for you it wasn't satisfying you didn't get what you wanted here you couldn't manifest the thing with them. You didn't get what it was you wanted. Emotionally, you were just dissatisfied. And that um, you're now accepting this sort of truth. And that you can see through whatever lie you might have been believing or wanting to see here, you know. And that you're no longer held back by any sort of thoughts that you might have had. And that the, the biggest thing here is for you to focus on yourself but you still feel very alone. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm missing something. So, Five of Wands is about conflict, you know, but it, it's like... Um, It could be that we were so conflicted about what to do that we felt imprisoned. You know, like there, there wasn't coming on the same page. To make things work was just difficult here. Like you had to fight, you know, you had to fight. And you're tired of fighting. You don't want to fight anymore. And so you're like, yeah, why do I got to fight? You know, why do I got to compete there? I can't no more. I'm just, you know, you just kind of um, don't feel you're someone who gave up, but you can no longer carry the burden of this. The burden of it being unfair. The burden of maybe how, how slow this person was either moving or, or how alone you felt here with the isolation. You know, like you just wanted to be free of this all because it was too difficult to be conflicted here. Conflicted about what to do. And that you wanted to um, just be single already. You know, like I just want to be single already or like free of this. Not need anyone. Like focus on myself. Like this is too painful. And in this, I, I, I'm, um, I'm not in an energy I want to be in. I'm imbalanced if I remain here. I'm just hurt. So I want to find my balance. I want to do what's just for me, you know, like for me, like what's right for me, what feels good for me. Manifest what I want. Nothing to do with situations here. And in order for me to do this, I have to remove my blindfold and get very honest with the great truth here and focus on that. Listen to my feelings, be very honest. 
allow myself to sort of move in a direction that feels free, not restrained, not making me feel isolated. So I can actually see myself, see myself for myself, not to not see you in myself, but see myself, you know, like, I don't want to see myself in you, or I don't want to connect myself to this situation. I just want to be able to see myself free and, and that you have the courage now and the strength to run with this. Like you're absolutely able to do this now. And at one point, you weren't. At one point, you were imprisoned by this connection. And so despite it, them recognizing how much it's hurt you, that your strength overrode this, that your desire to be emotionally happy overrode this, that your, your conviction and commitment to yourself was greater here, and that this will lead for you finding a new opportunity outside of potentially this person or this connection. Yeah, you can't know more. Okay. So, that's it? Is that it? Yeah, that's your pile. Pile number uh, three. I hope this resonated for you guys. Um, let me know. I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Hello, hello, gorgeous angels. Pile number four. You guys picked the Guardian of the Night Tarot. I love this tarot deck. We'll be using this deck to look at how you think your person, the person on your mind, is thinking and feeling about you and this connection. And then we will use the Disorder Tarot of Innocence to take a look at how this person is thinking you're thinking and feeling. The whole purpose of this is so that we understand how the other person is feeling and thinking and where they're coming from so that we can resolve whatever we need to resolve, you know? Because sometimes someone's perception could be completely out to lunch, but it's their truth. And if we're under one understanding, they're under another, it, it creates conflict. So that's what this whole purpose is, okay? But you got to be resonating with one side or the other, being how you think your person is thinking and feeling. If neither side sounds like what you think your person's thinking or feeling, then this isn't your pile. So no need to force anything. There's nothing to get. If it's confusing or I don't understand, then not your pile. We'll take another look at another pile or another reading, okay? So, clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile number four. Spirit, how does pile four think their person is thinking and feeling right here, right now? Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile four. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, pile four, for allowing me to tap into your energy energy around you at this time i'm so blessed so grateful to be here this pile for think that their person is thinking and feeling right here right now all right so i'll be reading this as what you think your person is thinking or feeling Take the five swords that revealed itself. Okay. In the bottom of the deck, we have six swords. And the only card that revealed itself was five swords. So let's see. We'll pull some oracles as well. How does pile for think their person is thinking and feeling about them right here, right now, spirit? Wow. Okay. Empathy. Wow. Okay. Says empathy. I am open to seeing both sides of a situation. Okay. And one of these. How does Pile 4 think their person is thinking and feeling right here, right now, spirit? Okay. Let's see. What do we see? We have two swords, five swords. Queen of Swords in Reverse, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Eight Swords, King of Cups, 
Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Nine of Pentacles in reverse. The King of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and the Ten Pentacles. And under the Six of Swords, we have the Three of Wands in reverse. I am going to uh, keep that like that. Now let's see what we have with the Oracles. We have Anger, and we have Trust, we have Strength, and we have Balance. Wow, holy kamoli, Batman. And then we have Octopus. And we have Empathy. I'm open to seeing both sides of a situation. And then we have Support. Okay, wow. Let me sit with this energy here and see all that I see. King of Swords under that, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and, and Reverse, and then the Ace of Swords. Okay, and the Balance, and then the Six of Swords. Oh, okay. So you think that this person um, can't decide here? Like they they can't decide because they have they have feelings. But really where they're stuck here is in their ability to make things happen, you know, to actually take action and to invest and build something here with you for the long term. That they would um, have to make themselves available and, and right now that this person is um, not doing this for whatever reason and that you think that they think that you're mad about this, you know, that, that you're mad about this and that... Um, this is why there's conflict between you guys because they can't move forward right now. They can't commit to you right now. They don't really understand how to embrace the greater truth that you know that they should know or do know. And the great truth is, you know, that, 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 that they can move forward, that there could be a coming together, but that you are understanding of this. You're not like, like although you're mad about it, you personally don't really understand it, but you can sympathize with them, you know, because because you are intellectual enough to understand this. Like you, you're, um... yeah, it's like there, there's two energies here. It's like you're really upset by this, you know, like they, they left you feeling very angry because it's like, oh, like, can't you just do it? Like, oh, but it's like, but I get it. Like, I get it, I get it, I get it, you know? And, and so because of this sort of energy that you have, it's like they think you're really intellectual about this or like you you really get them or you really get this or understand the situation on a deep level. It's like, I get it, you know? Like, although I'm very angry and upset and I want you to see, like, and I don't understand it fully, it's like, but I get it. I get why we're stuck and why you have reservations here. You know, so the challenge is one that's they that's a soft challenge because it's not screw you and why can't you like it's like a soft place for them to be challenged. But you've been their support, you know, with this deer. It's very innocent and it's very gentle. Although we see five swords and five swords is like could be like um, you know crazy arguments and sabotage and mean things said and done. But I feel like it's it's. It's a calm five swords. It's like the five swords is we can't agree. You can't move past your prison, your mind. And although there's feelings here, it's like you're still trapped in your prison of not making yourself available. You don't have the confidence or aim or, or understanding of how to build this thing. And so I'll support this, you know, like, you, like you've been their support. You've been there sort of feeding them energetically, sympathizing or just they're along their side knowing they can't you know that they're they're incapable of coming out so sometimes they're withdrawn or they're withholding and there hasn't been a balanced thing here and that they would um have to overcome this in order to move forward and in order for the situation the connection to move to the next stage you guys would have to overcome this five swords you know, and the five swords is based on their indecision and their lack of movement and them maybe not acting on their emotions or something about them not trusting their own emotions, you know, them not trusting their own emotions. And so they might be more in their mind and what it is that has them stuck or what it is that they're more focused on that's, that's 
not as significant or, you know, like, like there's a feeling here that we should act on our heart. We should act on how we feel. We should act on our authenticity of what's pulling to us and what we are connected to, you know, what we want to create and our emotions. But this person is too stuck by their own sort of mental prison of belief and thought instead of embracing a great truth. And, and some of them, it's like, I'm hyper independent here with the nine of pentacles in reverse. Like, I just want to kind of do it on my own here in some way, you know, like I can build my own sort of empire on my own. But you're thinking like, well, this is only a nine pentacles. You know, and, and even then you think maybe they don't even have a nine pentacles for themselves, but it's kind of like, like this is the eight swords, their belief that they're already stable, solid, confident. Like I've already built a nine pentacles. Meanwhile, you're thinking like, dude, or whatever, you can have this 10 pentacle, you know, like an actual 10 pentacles, not like a pretend nine pentacle here. There's nothing wrong with the nine pentacles and not everyone needs, but the 10 pentacles is like, we can we can die and and leave behind a legacy for our family and it's like our future that um stands the test of time here that we can have a vision for this the future and, and the building of something here you know and be committed to this 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 beautiful future of, of uh, stability but it's like nah i'd rather just sort of um do it alone here but but still they're not like do what alone like this is sort of the limitation yeah you feel like they feel you're angry you know you're, you're angry about it but you're not taking it out on them you're showing empathy that no matter how upset you are about the situation not working and their choices and their lack of decision and their lack of action that you're still kind and that you understand it in some way because you're very intelligent they think you're intelligent. Maybe this is, you know, has nothing to do with intelligence. Maybe this has everything to do with your being kind, but you're showing them compassion. You've been a safe place for them. You've been, you know, supporting their indecision in some way and they're to help them throughout their healing in some way or so this is how you think they feel. Okay, so if this is how you think they feel or the other way around, we're gonna take a look at how they think you feel. And see what pulls through there. It's like this person also feels like you've done everything you can. Okay, or so you think. Because this is how you think they feel. Like you've done everything you can if you were able to do whatever you can you have. Like you've done it all for them. You've been everything here for them. You've been all things and you've done everything you can. And it just keeps pulling through. Okay, so... Well, let's see now for the Disorder Tarot of Innocence to see. I better get my stones ready because there's a lot of um, nudity in these cards. But we're looking at how does Pile 4's person think? Pile 4 is thinking and feeling that. How does Pile 4's person think? And Pile 4 is... Um, thinking and feeling right here right now spirit please protect me and the viewer as i channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile four Oopsie. Okay. we have the two of wands in reverse Well, gotta cover it. Okay, and we have six swords. So it's coming out in your reading as well. How does Pile Four's person think Pile Four is feeling right here, right now about them? What do they think that they're feeling and thinking in this connection? Right here, right now, spirit. Please help me to channel this message for the greatest and highest good of Pile 4 in this connection. What does Pile 4 need to know about how the person on their mind thinks they're feeling and thinking? And 
one more Oracle pack. All right. And what do we have? Let's start with the Oracles of Love. Oh my goodness. We have Caution and we have Ghost. We have courage. I find the inner strength to face fear with confidence and forgiveness. I acknowledge that harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. And wolf, earth energy, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. I also always get fire with this, uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Mm, okay, so let's see. We have the page of cups in reverse, two of wands in reverse, and the Ten Cups. And the Seven of Cups in reverse. Oopsie. And the Six of Cups in reverse. And the Hermit, Virgo Energy. And that's clarified by the Moon in reverse, Cancer Pisces. Under six swords, we have judgment, and under judgment, we have the world. Wow. Holy, holy, come on. I do feel I want to... Under that, we have ten swords. Wow. Okay, so ten swords, the world, judgment. That's that's calling it an end here. Moving on. Okay, so you're calling it an end, and you're moving on, and you're seeing a great truth. Okay, the great truth is that I really, you know, I'm having a difficult time moving on, they feel. Because you saw a future potential of, of a beautiful coming together here and the only thing that could make this come true would be them getting clear and them getting out of their confusion and, and making a choice and coming forward with expression and, and acting on their emotions and doing this. And that... Um, this person might have let their fear sort of get in the way, but that they're not understanding something about themselves deep enough to see why they couldn't commit here in some way because um, something from within them was um, keeping them stuck on another... experience like for example some of these people could have been um, experienced something in their past that made them understand themselves in a way that was like I need to be independent the only way that I can have success is to focus on self you know and that sort of a mindset or, or whatever happened to them and so that's what they run with that they're still in that mindset, that they're still sort of stuck there, that there's no other understanding that they have uncovered but that. And so, although with this connection, there's there's a potential and there's feelings that you think they're going to forever be hung up and stuck on the thing that's keeping them sort of distant or um, depend on themselves or kind of not allow you in or just be the wild wolf here and so you have no choice but to sort of move on because you don't want to stay in a situation that's five swords you know like you come to an understanding and so for some of you guys you might have just left and so this person's like yeah eventually i'm just not going to hear about from pile four because they're just at the verge here where they're 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 seeing the truth and understanding something and they're just slowly going to disappear and they'll be i'm hearing gochay somebody that i used to know like they're just going to be somebody that i used to know you know and and though there was this deep deep love and then and, and a soul connection and you know this this deep love that we had it's like i'm just going to become somebody that they used to know because this person chose to be courageous and do something here, which was set themselves free and not hold a resentment, you know, not to be mad at me because I couldn't or wouldn't. Like actually hold space here for forgiveness, but, but at the same time, it's like 
eventually their their true feelings are going to come online which is i don't i can't keep feeling this love like eventually the love dissipates and and for them they're feeling like um You know, like, like, since the love has no other recourse but to dissipate over time, this is like cautioning them. It's like, am I sure? You know, because now I'm on caution, I'm on notice that eventually this person is just going to be somebody I used to know and fade away and that their love's going to go with them and dissipate. And that same with this Ten Cups is going to kind of fade away. All because I couldn't act on my feelings and choose this connection and, and make them feel like I was clear and certain about what I wanted because of what I experienced in the past that had me really stuck about my independence or my freedom or my way I lived my life. Um, I, ha I had a, a mission of something here that, that was taking priority. Maybe I had to take care of my family or, um, I don't know, brotherhood or the, the way I lived my life, you know? And so I don't want to look at anything further. It's like, it's like I don't want to look at anything further or that they haven't looked at themselves further enough to clear why they feel this way or to overcome that, 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 that feeling that had them stuck or has them sort of relive in that energy, maintain in that energy you know, that, that, that they can't be free unless they, they, they look at this or what's driving this, but that you see clearly, you know, that you see clearly and that you had no choice but to, to end it here because what are you going to do? Stay in a situation where someone is just not acting on their emotions and not choosing, not moving forward. Yeah, look at two cups. So, and there's so much love here. So it's like, despite the love, you know, despite the love, and the potential to come together and be completely happy. It's like it had to end. And so this is, this, is, this is very painful. But on top of it, you're like forgiving and understanding of this. But that the natural course, regardless of how forgiving and loving and kind and how much was there, the natural course of action is that eventually you just fade into the sunset and let this person go. And which is exactly what naturally happens here because when we move on, I mean, we move on, right? And so this person's like, my light's yellow. Like, I got to take action if, 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 if I'm forever never going to see this person again. I'd have to face my fear of looking at why it is that I'm sort of in this because really it might have not presented itself as fear, but something in my subconscious that was um, driving an action that was stemmed from something I'm actually stuck on. You know, I'm stuck on some something that's driving my action that I haven't looked at that might be driven from fear in some way. And so in order for me to notice this action and do something here, I'd have to be courageous. You know, I'd have to be courageous. And, and for some of them, they'd have to overcome being challenged in the past with something that might have left them hung up. Forgive their past. Forgive their parents, forgive their experience, you know, why it is that they, they feel this thing of what they are. So I'm going to clarify this wolf because for me, I'm just getting like a lone wolf, like I'm independent, my freedom, you know, but it's like pushing everyone else away because of an experience of the past here. Yeah, the world, it's like that needs to come to an end. Okay, I need to put that behind me. In order for me to have a new beginning with pile number four, so like successfully, like I can't still be hung up on this sort of thing. If I don't put it behind me and clear the slate, like how can we move forward? The devil, yeah, we're stuck, 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 Capricorn energy. Okay, devil is some um, unhealthy ways of being that might be dictating our, our drivers, you know, could be addictions, unhealthy patterns because of events that's hurt us or that replay in our mind and so it could be as a child you know we experience maybe the divorce of our parents and so we're hung up here and so it's like I, I need to be this lone wolf you know and it's like well this is devil attitude because we're going to dictate all of our future happiness 
based on an experience that has us hung up and not to not to be able to choose for ourselves, you know? So that would take hermit work, shadow work, looking at self, what do we truly want, digging into the subconscious, allowing our fears to come up, take action on this, move out of that energy, be in charge, you know, not let the devil run the show here, but maybe they're suppressing with addictions. Yeah, nine swords and lots of anxiety here, so... This is it. This is how they think you feel, you know, and um, it could be certainly their own projection, you know, their own projection because this is um, maybe what's actually going on and they see you as very intelligent and seeing through this, you know, seeing through it. I think you saw through this person and, and the fear and that there's, there is love here, but it's a sad love because it couldn't be acted upon. So it makes it even more sort of sad. It's like we both know the love, we both feel the love, we both see the love, but I couldn't take the first step here in the action of the love because I'm stuck on an experience. Let's, uh, well, we see devil, so yeah, definitely stuck, but let's see, what's this uh, six cups in reverse? What's this six cups in reverse that might uh, shine some insight for pile four? I mean, it could be anything for anyone. It could be a relationship in the past, it could be our parents, you know, our caregivers, um, um, past lives where we have to overcome ancestral wounds that's that make us believe that we're some sort of wolf energy the death yeah it needs to come to an end just the world come to an end the death like it needs to come to an end it needs to tra we need to transmute that pain and energy and belief and, and we don't necessarily need to get rid of it but we need to transmute it in a way that we can work with it so it transforms because it's a fragmented self that's stuck in the past and so when parts of our self is fragmented energetically it's in the shadow, so we need to come whole. We need to accept certain things we don't want to see about self. And so we replay memories, and we're stuck with the nine swords, stuck in that energy until we do the digging and we embrace where we left off. Okay, child, come to me. You know, you might have felt abandoned by your parent. Come to me. Embrace that part of self so we can transmute this energy and transform ourselves into someone different who now can move forward who now doesn't have to be so wolf-like you know i'm getting the wolf again like i said is the independent wolf thing devil again okay and just split it so that's the that's the toxic thing you know and and instead of dealing with this they could be focused like i said on on numbing agents and uh, when i see seven cops i see like you know, my independence here of um I don't know, like it could be wolf pack, like I was saying, with my friends, partying, the devil, drinking, drugs, parties, distractions, numbing agents, and six cups here in, in reverse. So I'm stuck with that, 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 that memory, you know, Scorpio energy, Cancer, Pisces, and Virgo. So this is what I have for you guys, beautiful, oh, and Leo's pulling through with the courage, and this is what I have, so I hope, and Capricorn with the devil, I hope this helped you guys, I'll see you at the next one, okay, bye-bye.